Hello and welcome to this undergraduate skills video where we're going to learn about various basic laboratory calculations which will be extremely useful as you progress through your degree. Now why do you need to know these calculations? Well it will allow you to analyse scientific data and once it's been analysed you can then start to understand it and once you understand it you can start to draw conclusions on what that data shows. So without further ado, in this particular video we are going to focus on calculating the coefficient of variation and for this you need to understand what the arithmetic mean, normal distribution and standard deviation are. Therefore, I advise you to watch the associated videos before continuing. So what exactly is the coefficient of variation? Well in plain and simple terms it is commonly referred to as the relative standard deviation and that is because it takes the standard deviation as a measure of deviation in a data set and expresses it as a ratio to the mean value of that data set and quite often it is expressed as a percentage of the mean value. Now a key question that is often asked is if our standard deviation can show us the extent of variation within a data set why would we need yet another method to look at variation? Well, by expressing the deviation relative to the mean, it allows the comparison of data sets which have vastly differing means, as we'll see later on. So how do we go about calculating the coefficient of variation? Well, we need to know a few things first. We need to have calculated our arithmetic mean and the standard deviation of our data set, be that the sample or population standard deviation. Next we use the following relatively easy equation where we divide the standard deviation by the arithmetic mean and multiply this value by 100 which effectively gives the coefficient of variation as a percentage. Now to help make sense of this equation and why we might use the coefficient of variation we are going to calculate it for two example data sets. In our first example we have a student who is counting the number of monocytes in a patient's blood sample using a microscope and hemocytometer. During the first count they note 235 monocytes per microliter of blood. To try and increase the accuracy of their data they perform repeat counts on different blood samples from the same patient, noting 204, 214, 256 and 251 monocytes per microliter. Following this experimental counting, the student calculated the mean to be 232 and the sample standard deviation to be 22.7. The student now wants to know how dispersed their data is as a ratio of the mean, i.e. what is the coefficient of variation of monocytes per microliter. And so in order to do this, we need to use our equation and transfer all of the information from our example into it. So S becomes our standard deviation and X bar becomes our arithmetic mean. Now to make things easier we can simplify this equation by dividing our standard deviation by our mean giving us 0.098 which can now be multiplied by 100 to give us the coefficient of variation as a percentage. Which for this particular data set is 9.8% but what does this mean? Well it essentially means the data within the data set deviates from the mean by almost 10% so we'd expect to see values 10% above and 10% below the mean. Now let's look at a second example. Here the same student wants to look at a different cellular population in the blood, specifically basophils which are a different type of white blood cell present in much smaller quantities. So in the same samples the student counted 50, 54, 70, 72 and 79 basophils per microliter. Following this experimental counting, the student calculated the mean to be 65 and the sample standard deviation to be 12.4. The student now wants to know how dispersed their data is as a ratio of the mean, i.e. what is the coefficient of variation of basophils per microliter. So in order to do this, we need to use our equation and transfer all of the information from the example into it. So S becomes our standard deviation and X bar becomes our arithmetic mean. Now to make things easier, we can simplify this equation by dividing our standard deviation by our mean, giving us 0 0.191, 
which can now be multiplied by 100 to give us the coefficient of variation as a percentage, which for this data set is 19.1%. But what does this mean? Well, it essentially means the data within the data set deviates from the mean by almost 20%. So we'd expect to see most of our values 20% above or 20% below the mean. Now this expertly demonstrates why the coefficient of variation is useful. You see, if we compare the coefficient of variation of basophils per microliter counted in our second example to the coefficient of variation of monocytes in our first example, we can see they differ from one another with the coefficient of variation for basophils being approximately double that of monocytes. Now, if we were to bring up the raw data, calculated mean and standard deviations, we can start to see a few things. The mean of our monocytes is 232, which is a relatively large number compared to that of our basophils, which is a relatively small number. Calculating our standard deviations, we can see that the standard deviation of monocytes is 22.7, suggesting a relatively large deviation compared to that of basophils, which is only 12.4, suggesting a relatively small deviation. Therefore, if we were to use standard deviation, we might conclude that the data for monocytes is more dispersed than that of basophils, which would be incorrect. Essentially, when the mean values of two datasets are vastly different, it can make comparisons using the standard deviation very unreliable, because when values are large, the standard deviation value will naturally be much bigger. Therefore, by calculating the coefficient of variation, it takes into account the size of the mean value. This makes the comparison of different data sets with vastly different mean values not only possible, but meaningful. So in these examples, the deviation in basophils is approximately 20% above and below the mean, whereas it's approximately 10% for monocytes. And this essentially shows there is a greater deviation in the basophil counts than there are in the monocyte counts. And that is essentially coefficient of variation, an indicator of how spread out data is as a ratio of the mean value. And with that, we come to the end of this basic laboratory calculations video. Hopefully you found this content useful, easy to understand, and can use it going forward during your data analysis. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day.